Hey, welcome to What's Good in the Neighborhood. My name is Remington Bennett and I will be your host. And today we are here with council member Richard Alacon. How are you, Mr. Alacon? I'm great. Thank good? You for You're good? Me. You're good in the neighborhood? So far. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, I just wanted to get started. How did you become a politician and what are some things that led you to wanting to be a council member? Yeah, really, as a young man, I, I really didn't think about being a politician. I, I, I wanted to provide service to the community. When I was 15 years old, I tutored at Sharp Avenue Elementary, and I realized how enjoyable it was to uh, give uh, something to, to other people. And so whatever I do uh, has, has been in the realm of community service. So as a teacher, as a uh, community organizer, as a trainer and a teacher in uh, community service programs, and also representing Mayor Bradley for five years as his deputy in the San Fernando Valley, that uh, prepared me to become a politician. Yeah. Uh, but, but really, being a politician to me is no different than all the other things I've done. It's just an extension of all the experience that you've had in community service and, and using it uh, as tools to guide you as a politician. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you would be a politician? I mean, that's like, that's a huge dream for a lot of people, I bet. No, in fact, my mother gave me a note the day I graduated from college from Mrs. Flanagan in the <laughs> sixth grade. She, uh, she wrote that, that I would never be a success, that I would be a failure. And I asked my mother, why didn't you give me this note in the Yeah, that's grade? a horrible yeah. graduation note. Yeah, and she <laughs> said, because I never stopped believing in you. So uh, it was actually a very positive uh, uh, offering that my mother gave me. And, and I think um, uh, many young men struggle in their youth, and I was a class clown, and, and all I wanted to do was play baseball, and, and, uh, and then it, a light went on when I helped that l uh, those two little boys at uh, Sharp Avenue Elementary. Mm. Yeah, that's so wonderful. I mean, how, did you always have this interest in government, or were you in a different path before you became a politician? Or? You know, my, uh, my family was always uh, very interested in, in uh, politics. When John Kennedy was elected, I was seven years old, but my mother, uh, being that he was a Catholic and we were in Catholic school, it was a big deal uh, in, in Holy Rosary and Sun Valley. And so uh, ever since then, it seemed like my, my mother and my father were always talking about politics, not, not uh, getting involved, so to speak, but, but always aware of what was going on. So, yes, and then my sister, uh, who uh, preceded me? She she uh, uh, got involved in student politics at, at Cal State Northridge. Oh, okay. It was a very tumultuous time during the 60s. Uh, they, uh, uh, with uh, protests and marches and demonstrations, uh, the Black Student Union actually took over the administration building. Uh, so it was very uh, very prominent in our family's lives what was going on at that time. And, and uh, I I sort of received all of this information and used it as I moved forward. And I know you were actually a teacher before you started, um, you know, doing your politic thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think that influenced what you do now? Well, I think all adults are teachers. Mm -hmm. They just don't know it uh, yeah. necessarily, but uh, they're always teaching somebody. And, and so for me, uh, it was uh, an opportunity to do something that I never thought I would do. I, in fact, when, when I became a teacher, I, I know that... Uh, I, I actually had the opportunity to teach with some of my former teachers mm -hmm. in elementary school, and, and they just couldn't believe that I would uh, ever become a teacher. Uh, but uh, everybody has something to give, and, uh, and I think that many people uh, don't take advantage of that, uh, that knowledge, that experience that they've had to share with other people. And, and as my wife always says, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, receiving is in the giving. Mm, and, uh, okay. and so I, I think I've received a lot of personal benefit um, from uh, giving to others. Mm -hmm. That's really nice, yeah. And I mean, I know that takes a lot. That's a big part of community service. And do you think that you have one real goal in terms of community service? Or are you dedicated to one cause? Or <laughs> is it a huge plate of things? It is a huge plate of things. City Council is one of the largest uh, positions in local government in the United States of America. The city of Los Angeles mm -hmm. has 15 council members. We represent over 250,000 people. New York uh, has 54 council members. Uh, Chicago has more than 50. I mean, so, so our districts are very large. Mm -hmm. And so with that comes a lot of responsibility. And I've had a, enjoyed the opportunity of, of working on some big projects, uh, redeveloping the General Motors plant, uh, redeveloping the Price-Fister plant. 
uh, creating the brand new libraries uh, in uh, the Northeast San Fernando Valley, um, and, and the Pediatric Trauma Care Center, uh, the first ever Pediatric Trauma Care Center in the in the San Fernando Valley oh, wow. at Northridge Hospital. It's named after my son who was killed in a car accident. Oh. So, um, ha having the opportunity to do things that I've always wanted to fix. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to ride my bike around and say, if I got older, I wish I could do something to fix that. Mm -hmm. And as a councilman, I've had a, a lot of opportunities to fix something. Yeah, that's wonderful. And, um, ah. <laughs> um, do you have a specific project that you like the most, or is it all kind of equal in your mind? Well, I, I, obviously the, the project named after my son is very special to me. Uh, uh, the bill that I wrote in the state senate is named after him, and it's called Richie's Fund, the fund that was created that provides additional trauma care services throughout the state of California. And then the fact that we were able to build a pediatric trauma care center, uh, and, and I should say that my son was killed in a car accident, uh, and, but was rushed to the hospital and didn't make it in time. Mm. Uh, and they say that uh, little kids have to be there within 30 minutes to be able to uh, survive mm -hmm. uh, or have an 80% chance of survival. So it was critical that we establish a pediatric trauma care center. It took me 10 years, so I'm very proud of oh, that. Wow. But I can't exclude the General Motors plant, the redevelopment, creating 3,000 jobs for people. The uh, Right now we're working on the Discovery Science Center at, the, at what was uh, designed to be the Children's Museum. We've restored that project and, and very soon we'll be announcing with the mayor that, that we have uh, obtained all the funding to, to okay. make that project happen, and, and that'll be a very special project for Pacoima Lake oh, and wow. Terrace. Yeah, so it seems like a lot of work to just keep that all running. I mean, do you find it hard to stay in touch with all the different services and needs of the community, or do you feel like you're not giving much of your time as you should be? I wish I could do more, mm -hmm. and I think there there isn't a politician who didn't wish they could do more, but there's so much to do. Uh, fortunately, the city of Los Angeles provides us with uh, a lot of staff, and mm. so I have about 20 people that work for me, and they are the direct connection to the community and, and uh, work on literally every single person is handling a dozen projects, mm. a dozen to 20 projects every day. And so mm. um, we're, we're not able to, to do everything we'd like to do because our district is so large and, and diverse. Uh, but uh, we've tried to do a balance of taking care of the little things like fixing potholes and street lights, mm -hmm. as well as the big things like economic development with the development of the Price Fister site, the plaza, and, and the General Motors site. Um, so it's it's a combination of things. But mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, you're you're doing so many things that it's not like you can stop and enjoy any one thing because right. as soon as you finish another project, you got ten the next day that you're working on, mm -hmm. and uh, and so it's it's that's the challenge is, is juggling all of these projects and and hoping you don't drop any of them. Mm -hmm. So if you had it your way and you could decide anything for Los Angeles, what would it be? Ooh, yeah, <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I uh, was chair of the. Uh, end poverty in California committee in the state senate. My, my goal in life is to end poverty, so anything we can do to, uh, to eliminate poverty, uh, I think is, is what I would like to see. So uh, there's so many different facets of that, uh, whether it's uh, dealing directly with homeless people, uh, permanently homeless, or people who are temporarily homeless, uh, or whether it's just getting people through an unemployment situation. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think that that, uh, that is, is my uh, personal uh, vocation in life. Hmm. Well, I mean, have you been enjoying your time in office, even with all the things that you have to do? Because I bet it can get tiring at times, right? Um, tiring is not the word for it. Yes, um, you can't be in a public figure position, like mm -hmm. a, especially a politician without criticism. Uh, most politicians would be very satisfied with the 55 to 60 percent rating. Well, that means that 40 to 45 percent of the people are, are th probably throwing darts at you or don't know who you are, don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it's, it's, it, it has its challenges. But when you look at the whole picture of things and you look at all the accomplishments, uh, I feel very pleased to have the la last 20 years to yeah. be able to serve my community as mm -hmm. an elected official. Yeah, and you say when you look at all of the different accomplishments, do you think that the things that you stand for have been accomplished, or uh, do you think that you are successful in what you wanted to implement on the community? And well, I think people know that I, that I fight for the little guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's the the main message. That's why I, I, I 
ran for student body president at Poly High School, and it's the reason why I, I do my job today. Um, I, I believe, uh, you know, that, that one of the greatest challenges that we faced in the last five years has been the foreclosure crisis, mm -hmm. and I've been front and center because my district had the most most foreclosures in in, uh, in single family homes in the entire city of Los Angeles, and so. It, it, you know, when you look at the, the ramifications of that, and everybody knows somebody who lost their home as mm. a result of the foreclosure crisis, but in order to do that, you have to take on very powerful interests. And so I've, I've challenged the banks to be better, and I've gone to the federal administration, met with the Obama folks, and asked them uh, to focus more on principal reduction, reducing the, the debt for, for people, and that's the best way to do it. And so, and knowing that, that they've actually responded to some of those things, not just because I said it, but because a whole bunch of people are saying it. Mm -hmm. And that's what people have to understand. Is, is they say one voice uh, isn't going to amount to much. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It can. If, it, if it's uh, said in the right place at the right time, uh, and then you have to believe the other people are thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're a genius sitting here with all these wonderful ideas mm -hmm. and nobody else thinks of it. So other people are saying the same thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so eventually we did see a principal reduction program emerge from the federal government. Uh, the poverty rate, looking at the poverty rate, uh, has been a tremendous challenge. But we were able to get the administration to keep statistics that they never kept before on, on uh, uh, what the actual sustainability rate is. In other words, how what it takes for somebody to take care of themselves. In mm -hmm. Los Angeles, it's you know three, four times more than uh, in some parts of the country like Georgia or Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, and yet we have the same exact poverty rate. Mm -hmm. Well, how can wow. that be? And so, um, so those are some of the things that that I think I've I've, I've been a voice for for those who who had no voice. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people in Los Angeles, they're different people and they have different opinions. So how do you tackle on all those different opinions and how do you respond to those? I mean, I mean, a lot of people don't feel the same way that other people do. So how do you make sure that everybody's needs are met? Uh, as I said, it's impossible to try and solve everybody's uh, problem and, and, and meet everybody's needs. Um, and the first thing when you say, how do you tackle uh, mm -hmm. their opinions and their challenges. It, it's not really about tackling anything. It's, first of all, you, you have to be a good listener. You have to really hear what people are saying. Uh, and, and when you have an operative, when you hear something that really is a good idea, uh, then, then you have to do the work to, to make it happen. And that's exactly what happened when, uh, when the General Motors plant uh, was, uh, when, when it was closed. Uh, it was my primary challenge to, to reopen it. And uh, Mayor Reardon and I shook hands on it right after being elected and said, look, if we can disagree on some things, because mm -hmm. he's a Republican and I'm a Democrat, yeah. um, but let's agree to do something about the General Motors plan. And so uh, if you focus uh, and do the hard work uh, and hopefully with some creativity, uh, you can uh, do amazing things. Mm. Have you found any hardships in your life or even your term in office that you feel like you've had to overcome or has it been a smooth ride? Or well, 20 years in office, anybody who's been in office in 20 years uh, has times when they're challenged. Uh, and, and for me, it's been a tremendous uh, challenge the last five years. Uh, obviously, the district attorney believes that I didn't live in my district, and, and so uh, it has been very public, and it, it's a very difficult challenge for not only me, but my family. And, and so, um, so I think what people have to understand is that when you're committed to your cause, uh, then you have to accept that there are going to be uh, challenges. Uh, if you don't do anything, you may never be challenged, but you probably won't get much done. Hmm, yeah. I mean, I mean, there are the challenges, but is there something that you looked at and you're like, oh my gosh, I did this? Really? Me? Well, all the projects I've mentioned, the General mm -hmm. Motors plan, the library system replacing every single library and increasing the, the number of libraries, adding the library in Lakeview Terrace to a list uh, that was proposed, uh, replenishing Hanson Dam. I, I never thought it would look like it looks. Uh, and, um, and then again, the uh, reviving what was then known as the Children's Museum will now be known as the Discovery Science Center in Los Angeles. Hmm. That, a lot of people said, will never happen because the Children's Museum went bankrupt. Well, we, we've restored it. We're going we're gonna to open it in a couple of years, and it's going to be a tremendous uh, jewel for the San Fernando Valley. And then some of the other projects, uh, you know, I, I introduced an interesting thing. This is a world issue uh, to, uh, to pull all of our assets out of Swiss banks because they were not repaying the uh, Jewish uh, people who lost artwork. 
oh, wow. in the Nazi uh, time period, and that artwork was being stored in, in, in banks, and, and uh, m millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars was, was at stake. And just by, by introducing a motion in council, you know, the Swiss ambassador came to tell me that, that, uh, that that's not their issue. And so, uh, so there are things that you can change. Three weeks later, they, they acquiesced and they, they did provide uh, reparations for the Jewish community. So even on a macro scale, when you look at the city of Los Angeles, you can have impact on the world. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we are about to go to commercial, but when we come back, we are going to hear more from Mr. Richard Alarcon. If you didn't know, neighborhood councils were created to help improve your communities. We have funds available for projects that are important to you. We also have the ability to bring other resources provided by the city. So be part of the solution and become a member of your local neighborhood council. Hey, you ever thought about video production? What about audio production? Well listen, we got it. All the way down to the cameras, to the shooting, all the way down to the editing. Oh, not to mention we also have lighting classes too. Also audio classes, you guys. Can't miss that. Mixing, mastering. Yeah, we'll show you how to engineer, you guys, all in Pro Tools. I'm talking about just like the big dogs do it. Where well, you're able to do music production also, work the MPC. I'm talking Reasons and Fruity Loops. <laughs> hey, you know how Kanye does it, right? Or should I say Little Wheezy? Little Wheezy, we, we can show how we get it. Show them how we get right into it. Show how we get it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's enough, guy. Thanks a lot. Anyhow, if you want to go ahead and get in touch with us, you can reach us at area code 818-890-5082. Our company name is Heroes of Life. Our address is 11243 Glen Oaks Boulevard, Pacoima, California, 91331. Hi, my name is Isaac Luna from Luna's Raiders and Mufflers. We are located at 10677 San Fernando Road, the beautiful city of Pacoima, California. We've been in the same location for over 40 years. We specialize in radiators, mufflers, brakes, shocks, custom exhaust, catalytic converters. We are not cheap and we're not expensive, but we are reasonable. Our phone number is 818-899-0812 and we are glad to be of service to you and thank you. Hi, welcome back to What's Good in the Neighborhood. I'm Remington Bennett, and I'm sitting here with Richard Alarcon, council member. So um, a little bit before the break, you talked about some of the hardships that you went through in being a, a council member and some of the things that you've had to endure. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the thing that you said about them not thinking you lived in your district. I'm a little confused about that. Well, city council members, as most elected officials, are, are supposed to live in the, the district that they, um, that they are running in. And uh, there's a, a dispute between the district attorney and, and myself and my wife. Uh, they say we didn't live where we lived, and, and we say we did. And so uh, we're going through a court process, and, and you know, it's been very public and very difficult. And, but you, know, you have to look at all the things on your plate, not just uh, one thing. And, mm -hmm. and so, uh, all things considered, we feel very blessed to have the opportunity to serve. Yeah. Do you ever, I mean, I know something like that is so public, and do you ever wish that I kind of want that private life back and I don't want all my information out there? Every single day. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Um, yeah, well, um, sure. Uh, you, there are times when you say, why am I doing this? But honestly, I'm, I'm coming to the end of my 20th year in office, mm -hmm. and I feel very fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity yeah, to serve for 20 years. Probably. Most people don't serve half that long and so I feel that I've accomplished what I intended to do. And then again when you have this attitude that it's just about service, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're a councilman or a senator or a teacher or a community service worker. What I do in my next phase will be contributing to uh, the community as well. And so to me it's one continuous flow yeah. of, of uh, providing service to my community. Yeah. And you've been on, you know, you've been a council member for 20 years and you've been in this politician game for a long time and so I bet you can give really good qualities and to future politicians on how to be a good politician. Do you think you can do that? 
Well, I, I can I can give him what I think is, yeah. is a good politician. First of all, I, I think many young politicians are initially driven by the power of being an elected official and the opportunity to, to move uh, the money and, and create projects and do things. Uh, but I really think that the, the, uh, y if your head's screwed on right, you should focus on the service aspect of it, mm -hmm. what it is you want to accomplish that, that makes our community better. And as long as you do that, I think, I think you're, you're, you're going to be a good politician. Uh, too many people are, are guided by what they think the opinions of other people are. Uh, but frankly, uh, we're elected to state our opinion based mm -hmm. on everything we've heard from everybody else. So we should never fear expressing that opinion. In a, especially in a democracy. And so I've seen far too many politicians who I know in their hearts believe one way, but will say something different mm -hmm. or do some or support something other than what they truly believe in because they believe it's politically wise mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, and I just, uh, I, I wish we had more politicians who uh, would stick to their guns in terms of what they believe in their heart. And uh, I think our, our city, our community, our state, our country would be better for it. Mm -hmm. And do you think with that, with certain politicians saying one thing and believing another, do you think that backfires eventually, or do you think it kind yes. of, it does? In Absolutely. what way? Yeah. Uh, that's very observant of you to, to ask that question. <laughs> uh, yes, it does, because eventually um, people are, are going to drive the question, and, and like a good reporter is not just going to take your position, they will do the research and find out that you took a different position in the past. Mm. And, and so how are you going to, how, how are you going to remember all of these lies? If, sure. if, you, if you don't uh, say your opinion all the time and, and not base it on somebody else's uh, moment, like you might be in a meeting and try to take care of these people, but uh, then go to another meeting and say something different, well, maybe the same person was in both meetings and can catch you on that, or the reporter. And, and so many have done that. Uh, and so I, I think the best thing to do is just uh, say what you truly believe. Um, try not to insult anybody, but... Uh, express yourself uh, with what's in your yeah. heart. And you having really strong beliefs, do you ever go into a situation where you are around people who don't necessarily believe what you do, but you feel like you need to kind of Always. sway? <laughs> yeah. Do you all? Do you stick? Do you stay strong? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm. I've, I've jumped into some very controversial issues during the course of the last twenty years, and, and um, you know, I don't uh, take things personally. I don't. I try to. Um, uh, to respect other people's opinion. This is a democracy, uh, and, y and you should enjoy the process of democracy. So uh, sometimes the vitriol gets a little, a little rough, but mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you have to, you have to, you, the only one you can answer to is yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you stick to your guns, if you uh, express yourself, if you do it with respect, and, and if you respect your opponent, uh, I think at the end of the day, you can live with yourself a yeah. lot better. <laughs> and so what do you see for the future Los Angeles, or the future California even? Well, our immediate challenges are the same as they've been for the last five years. Our economy is, is, uh, is suffering, uh, mm -hmm. and that means people are suffering. And so we're going to have continued challenges in the city of Los Angeles of maintaining public services because we're not getting the tax dollars that we need to provide all the service. So there's going to be continued cuts in our budget as we move forward, and where they make those cuts is going to be a very difficult challenge. Um, but I think the, the, the toughest job that the city has is to uh, create economic development that works for the city, that creates jobs, that gives business opportunities, that generates more taxes so that mm. we can provide more services. Um, but that's still our greatest challenge today. Mm. Do you feel that there is a certain foundation within the government that needs to be perfected to make these things improve? Or No democracy is ever perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always a, a continuous improvement. It's a challenge, and sometimes you slip, and you've got to get up and, and try to fix it. But the most important thing is that everybody participates. Uh, one of our greatest challenges is that so many people are cynical these days. They don't want to get involved in anything. They don't want to get involved in their kids' little league, mm -hmm. in the dance program. They don't want to get involved in church. They don't want to get involved in anything, yeah. let alone government. And mm -hmm. so, um, so I think uh, our our constant challenge is is trying to alleviate the uh, scourge of democracy, which is cynicism. Mm. 
And so for the future, for the little kids who are looking at you and going, wow, I want to do that. I want to, you know, stand for what I believe in. What do you, what advice do you give them? And what do you say to those kids who are like, I want to do what Richard Alarcon does? Well, I, I don't know about that, but, <laughs> but I think uh, the classic saying is, is to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. and, and if you are true to yourself uh, and uh, true to, to what you believe in in, in your heart, uh, then uh, you will be successful. Uh, whatever you do, whether you uh, are an astronaut or whether you're a teacher or whether you're a politician, uh, I think uh, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is one of the most important things that you've gotten out of being who you are? Oh, well, it's, you know, one thing I didn't mention is the fun that you have. You meet uh, very interesting people from presidents to kings to actors and actresses, singers, mm -hmm. songwriters, uh, and, and so there, there is a, a fun sort of side to it, uh, but the work is, is quite uh, different than, mm -hmm. than the fun side of it. A lot of people get into it just for the notoriety, the, uh, the, ce the celebrity of it, um, but the service is, is uh, the prime uh, concern, and, mm -hmm. and so uh, you can't lose sight of that. Some people do, mm -hmm. and they, they want to focus on the celebrity more than than on the work. Yeah. You say you've met some interesting people. I'm curious. Who are some of the people? I'm sure you've met so many, so we don't have to go down that whole list, but who is somebody that you were like, oh my gosh, I just met this person? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, President Obama and, and Bill Clinton uh, come yeah. to mind first, but, but there's also interesting people like Rupert Murdoch, who uh, mm -hmm. owned the Dodgers for a time, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll never forget when he told me uh, I, I told him that I thought it was good to place Raul Mondesi from center field to right field. And he looked at me and he said, yes, and I'm going to make a lot of money too. And I thought, wow, that's what these guys are all about. But I've also met some, uh, some we had LL Cool J in city council last oh, no Friday. Way. And, that's so and, cool. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's uh, we, we just runs the gamut. And, mm -hmm. and so this is Hollywood, this is Los Angeles. And, and so that's one of the fun sides of what we do. Yeah, so there are some perks, you know. Oh, it's not all rough and, you know, get to have some fun sometimes. Well, right? but the people of Los Angeles um, take that in stride more than ever, especially with all the media uh, attention, all the, the uh, devices that you have at your hand, your phone, mm -hmm. you can go anywhere in the world. And so, uh, so people are pretty casual about it, and, and we're the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so as, as much as it's fun to... to uh, uh, to go to the Academy Awards or to uh, uh, yeah. to sit down with a, a very famous person, um, you know, I think I think uh, we take it in stride. It's yeah. part of our job. <laughs> Hi, my name is Isaac Luna from Luna's Raiders and Mufflers. We are located at 10677 San Fernando Road, the beautiful city of Pacoima, California. We've been in the same location for over 40 years. We specialize in radiators, mufflers, brakes, shocks, custom exhaust, catalytic converters. We are not cheap and we're not expensive, but we are reasonable. Our phone number is 818-899-0812 and we are glad to be of service to you and thank you. Well, I mean, this has been a really interesting conversation. I'm so glad that I got to sit here and talk with you. But, I mean, we have to go. Our time is up. This is really sad. So, <laughs> I mean, thank you so much for being here today. And um, I 
I, I thank you so much for talking with me. No, here. congratulations to Heroes for Life, and, and uh, I yeah. hope I can continue to support. Okay, well, thank you so much. No, Let's shake you. hands. Great job. <laughs> thank yeah. you. And I'm Remington Bennett, and we will see you later with What's Good in the Neighborhood.